Hey guys, I was on my way to church today and got lost, found a cornfield and decided to welcome you guys to Corn Street Church. Hey guys, welcome to College Street. I am so happy. <laughs> hey guys, I was, oh, no, I already. <laughs> I just did that joke. <laughs> it's not even funny. You know the thing I'm most scared about? If it gets too hot and this turns into popcorn. You know it'd be unreal if I had a goatee like this? I used to do that as a kid. We'd, we'd pick these and then we'd stick them in our hats and pretend we'd have ponytails. Alrighty. Hey! Hey guys, I was on my ch on my, on my church today. <laughs> I was on my church today. <laughs> he who has ears, let him hear. <laughs> Dude, a mosquito just went by the lens. Did you see that? Thing was huge. <laughs> and they told me they were the size of penguins in BC. It's true. We like to start off with just talking nonsense, obviously, because I don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I didn't even talk. I had, a, I, had, I, had I hadn't even thought. Words are coming up. You know, I was only worried about my intro. Hey guys, welcome to College Street. We're so happy to have you join us today. If you have kids, we have an online uh, kids program just for them. So just go to our website, wherepeoplematter.church, and there's multiple age groups that you can choose from. Uh, if you'd like to contact us at all today and just let us know um, what you liked or didn't like about our, your experience today, we have a contact section on our website as well, where people matter church. Just fill that out and we'd love to get in touch with you. We like to start with praise, with, with songs, you know, in this season especially, uh, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and we praise Him through music, we praise Him through, through many things, but music is just one of those things. And whether you're at home, on your patio, in your kitchen, in a cornfield, on your motorcycle, wherever you're at, just stand with us today and let's worship God together. Sing this together now. 
part two of Gather, and thank you for taking the time to join us. You know, in this season, we've chosen to be uh, creative in the midst of crisis, and what a great opportunity to be out here with you. I'm actually in the Fraser Valley in uh, BC, Canada, uh, just off the coast of Vancouver. So wherever you're joining us from, why don't you just message us now, let us know where you're watching us from and where you're tuning in, and this is really cool that we get to do this. Well, in part two of our series, Gather, we talk about the importance of gathering and coming together and how sometimes there is a tension when we come together. And uh, the reason I brought you out into this cornfield is because it is harvest season out here in the Fraser Valley. And I remember growing up, I loved visiting my friends who were farmers. And uh, as a child in school, they would get pulled out of school to help with the harvest. And my best friends lived on farms. And, and so any chance I got, I was out there during harvest season. And I can remember one morning, my, being at my buddy's house and his dad waking us up like early in the morning before the sun even came up so that we would go on to the combine and get out into the field. And I think it's just so appropriate. I believe that God is calling us up to, to stand up in such a time as this and to look around. And the verse in John 4.35 I'd like to share with you says this, you know the saying, it's four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for the harvest. I believe that's the season that we are in right now as a church. We've seen tremendous growth in this season and tremendous reach in this season, but God is calling us out of our comfort. And so I have four points that I wanna share with you today. And the first point is that we are being sent out and that is to send out. Luke 10 says in Luke 10 verse two, he told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. See, with every opposition comes opportunity. And there is also problems that we face with provision. And the honest truth, an example of that is, um, you know, a lot of people like uh, gathering and they love the meal, right? But not a lot of people like to prepare the meal or clean the meal up after the mess. So we know that anything worth doing is going to take work. And a good example of, uh, of, a, of a great farmer is a farmer that collects for the harvest, but he collects seed also for the next harvest. You see a farmer, he gathers and he sends and he sows, right? So he's gathering with intention for the future, not just for the present. He's gathering not just so that he can store it up for himself, but that he can also feed others. And that is what God has called us to do in this season. And he makes a point to send out and sow. And that's what we should be doing right now in this season. We should be sending out and sowing, right? As, as a church, 
And as a family and as a community, we are in the sending business. We are in the people business. And we are sending out so that we can help others in need in such a time as this. We've been so blessed as part of College Street to be a church planting center, to raise up, equip, and release people in the calling and gifting that's on their lives. And that's what we should all be doing, whether we are farmers or we're just child, uh, children of God. <laughs> I was going to say children in the corn, but wherever you may be, you know, God is calling you and he's got a purpose and a plan for you. And he's created you for such a time as this. In Luke 10 verse 3, it says, go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. So there's the go part again, right? He's sending us. He's sending us out like lambs among wolves. There's a key point in that, that we were never called to play it safe. I think that we get distracted and we get discouraged when we feel that our feelings lead us instead of our faith, right? When we come up against obstacles and we don't realize that with every victory, there has to be a battle. And we're in a battle right now. God sees the battle that you're in, but most importantly, God sees the battle that he's calling you through in this season. And I think that's interesting that they mention, the, the scripture mentions wolves. Wolves. You see, <clears throat> the thing about wolves is they're really cunning. And wolves, they like to hide amongst the rocks and they'll wait for nighttime before they come out of the rocks and attack the sheep. You see, the enemy's waiting for you to fall asleep. The enemy's waiting for you to let your guard down before he attacks. And see, wolves, when they move, they always move in a pack and they tend to circle their victim and they try to run that victim off of a cliff. If they don't do that, one of their strategies as well is they'll have three wolves attack one sheep. One wolf will go after the head of the sheep. The other wolf will attack the sheep's feet to try to take their feet from underneath them. And the third wolf will go after its middle. That's what the enemy is doing in this season. I can see it. You know, the enemy is trying to go after your head. That's why the Bible says that we are to take every thought captive because if he can get at your head, he can get at your heart. And when he gets to your head, the next thing he's trying to do is try to take your feet from underneath you. You know, we are called to walk in peace. And if he can remove that peace and replace that with fear or frustration or anxiety, that's what, that's what causes us to lose the ground from beneath us. And then ultimately, he's after your heart. He wants to attack the very root, the deep inside what other people can't see. But guess who else is after your heart? God. And he's greater than anything that you may face or may be going through in this season. In Matthew 10, 16, it says, I am sending you like lambs into a pack of wolves, but be wise as snakes and as innocent as... I found this really interesting. You know, so I thought, I'm going to look up snakes a little bit and see what I can find out about them. Well, in terms of their ears, snakes are death to the sound that is carried by air. They pay no attention, okay? So a snake, we should learn from them that they pay no attention then to the gossip and the reports and things around them, right? They pay no attention to the threats of the tongue. You see, because a snake feels the vibrations of the ground. The snake is only uh, concerned about what the foot does, not what the mouth says. And I think too many times we're getting distracted of what, what people are saying versus what we should be doing. You know, there's a lot of talk out there and a lot of distraction. But you know, I'm the kind of person that like, don't just tell me, show me. And there's things that we don't need to be concerned about where we're getting distracted and getting derailed from our destiny. And the other thing is a snake's eyes, they're always open. You see a snake, even when they're sleeping, their eyes are open. And a sudden movement, a sudden flash will awaken them. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 to 8, it says, This is why we must not fall asleep as the rest do, but keep wide awake and clear-headed. There it is again, wide awake and clear-headed. For those who are, are, are falling asleep at night are like the drunkards that get drunk at night. But since we all belong to the day, we must stay alert and be clear-headed by placing the breastplate of faith and love on our hearts and a helmet protecting the head, come on, of hope and salvation of our thoughts. Wow, that is good. That's a good one to just think of and meditate on for a little bit. The importance of this, that we don't fall asleep in this season, that we don't recline. We talked about last week that we incline our hearts towards God, that we shift position, that we don't move back and step back in fear, but we move forward in faith. The next point that I want to lead into is that we engage. We engage. 
In Luke 10, 8 to 9, it says, When you enter a town and you are welcome, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them that the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is really cool. You see, we need to engage before other people respond. Their action will determine our response. And that's why we're first responders, not first reactors. You see, a response or an engagement, a a response engages a reaction. I'll say that again. A response engages a reaction. So we are still called to engage. And so when we engage, we engage first, but then we must be able to discern in the moment, is this worthy of my time? Is this worthy of my energy in this season, my efforts? You know, in Matthew 7, verse 6, it says, don't give to dogs what belongs to God, for they will only attack you. Don't throw pearls in front of pigs, for they will trample all over them. You know, there's a season and a time and a place for everything. We don't stop engaging others. But you can tell when someone wants to receive and when somebody is rejecting. That doesn't mean we stop sowing. It's just like this field that I'm standing in. I don't stop sowing because I know the good news. I know the result, it will produce a crop. But even in that, there's going to be weeds. But that doesn't mean I don't stop working the field. I don't stop sowing. I don't stop watering because I know the result of that. And the result of that is that other people get fed. And so this doesn't change the fact that we are called to enter and engage and bring the peace and good news. We said it before, we'll say it again. If we don't know the purpose of something, we will abuse it. The harvest isn't just for us, it's for others. We gather so that we can send. We gather so that we can help others in need so they can celebrate with us. And this leads me into my next point, the non-negotiables. When I coach others, I always encourage them to determine what are the boundaries, the healthy boundaries and the non-negotiables, whether it's in their relationships, whether it's in the dreams, the plans and the purposes they have. The Bible says above all else, guard your heart for everything flows out of it. So what are your non-negotiables? Well, here in the scripture, we are given some, right? And in Matthew 10, 14, it says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. I love that. And so the first one is leave it behind. Why don't you message me right now? Message me, leave it behind. I think we could all think of something that we could leave behind in this season that we've been chasing after and we've been putting all our efforts in and all our resources in and not producing any crop because God is calling us to get a move on right? Instead of staying where we're at, that we need to continue to sow where other people want to receive. So what did you come in with today that you will choose to leave behind? This is a non-negotiable because um, it says, does not welcome or listen to whose words? That's God's words, right? This isn't just us going around giving our own words and our own thoughts. These are God's words and God's thoughts. What are we called to and what is he calling us to? In Mark 3, 25, it says, if a house is divided against itself, that house can't even stand. And too many times I see couples, I see families, I see churches and communities where they're caught up in multiple vision and they have division. And they don't realize that they're not, instead of uh, a standing for love and unity and coming together, they're fighting amongst themselves. Again, they're, they're fighting the very one they should be fighting for. And that's why God has called us to come together and to gather and celebrate him and do the love and good deeds for our communities, for our churches and around the world. So the next thing that I want you to say is shake it off, shake it off, right? There's something that we need to shake off right now in this season. And what have you been taking maybe from place to place, from community to community, wherever that may be, job to job, and that you were never meant to carry, but somehow it attached itself to you. You know what happens to dust when when it starts to rain, right? Eventually it gets heavy and that dust, it turns into mud and we get stuck in the mud. It just started as dust, but when we went through the storm and it started to rain because we didn't leave that dust behind, we got stuck in it. We got stuck in the mud. And, and from the time that we move forward, if we keep, if we don't deal with the mud in our life and we don't take it off, we're afraid to even get dusty again because of that mud that's on us. We're afraid of the, of the storm and then we don't even enter in and we never engage because we didn't guard our heart and set our non-negotiables. For some of you, 
It's been the debris of disappointment. I can see it. I can feel it. That dust is really debris of disappointment that you've been through that's kept you from moving forward into your destiny. Jesus said the kingdom of, of God is like a man who found a treasure in a field. And you know what he did? He went out and sold all that he had so that he could own the field in which the treasure was in. See, a lot of people want the treasure without the dirt. Isn't that true? They want the treasure, but they don't want the dirt. And I'm here to tell you that God is in the midst of that. That God, you can find a savior in the midst of a storm. You can find Christ in the midst of crisis. But with all of that, it takes work and you're gonna get dirty. Just don't take that dirt with you wherever you go. Learn to dust it off and get a move on. In Luke 10, 17, it says that the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to your name. You see, at the beginning of the chapter, Jesus sends them out. But then coming back after all the persecution and the things that they faced, they were able to reap a reward and see the works of their hands. And then that's the next point that I want to bring up is discipleship, right? The purpose of us being deployed is so that we can disciple others, so we can help others, train up and equip others to do the same. See, the devil doesn't want you to deploy. No, 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 no. He doesn't want you to deploy and he won't let you go easy. If someone doesn't let you go easy, that means that you have great worth. Man, you should be excited right now. That should be a revelation for somebody right here, right now, right? The devil doesn't want to let you go easy and he won't let you go easy. He doesn't want you to be deployed. Instead, he wants you to be destroyed, distracted, whatever he can do. And he's going after you. Why? Because even the devil sees your worth and how your harvest can help others. See, the proof of God's plan, the proof of God's plan for your life is often in the activity of resistance. It's often in the activity of resistance. It, it, it should be an indication that you have, that God has great plans and purposes for you and that you're a threat even to the enemy in this season. So don't be afraid to step out, to send out, to enter in, to engage. And remember to guard your heart from those non-negotiables in your life. And remember, it's all about discipleship. Because if you just get stuck, trust me, you get stupid, right? I've been there and I can relate to that. If I get stuck in the mud and I don't wipe the dust off my feet or deal with the mud, I don't move on. And instead, I get, I get trapped in my own mind, in my own thoughts, in my own limitations, and then I fail to even move forward. In Luke 10, 18, it says, So he told them, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you all authority. This pertains to all of us. I have given you all authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power which power? All the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Remember, you will see amazing things and God will do amazing things through your family and through the things that you'll watch as he does miracles and he sets people free. But don't forget your connection to the creator. It's all about the source. Don't get caught in the stuff that's happening around you. Be caught up in your creator and his name is Jesus. Finally, we know it's about discipleship because in Matthew 18, it, we are told of, sorry, Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven, there it is again, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. It's a beautiful scripture. It's a beautiful commission that's on all of us. Not a great suggestion, but a great commission that we are to go out to all the world. And we're doing that right now with you. All over the world, people are watching this message and hopefully receiving the message of good news and hope that comes from a relationship with Jesus. And our takeaway today is, we gather to go. You see, it's time for us to let go of those chains and come out of what has been holding us back. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise Pushing back when the darkest weapons fall There's a power on my lips Even death can't defy when the name of our God is lifted high Cause there is resurrection power And we sing the name of Jesus Resurrection power And we raise a mighty sound Come on, let's 
There is resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. You know, I don't know your situation or the storm that you may be going through, but God knows. And if you can name a situation or you can name a storm, I can name a name that is above every name and I can name a savior and his name is Jesus. So if you're watching and this message spoke to you and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I wanna give you that opportunity right here, right now, despite the season that you may be going through, God's got you. You see, he came, he died and he rose again so that you could be set free. So in the midst of a season that looks like drought, in the midst of a season that looks like suffering, that he could reveal himself to you. You see, he is called the Prince of Peace and he offers us a peace that the world cannot give. And if you wanna receive that right here, right now in relationship with him, Paul says, if we believe in our hearts that God the Father raised his son from the grave, and we confess with our mouth that he is Lord, then we'll be saved. So let's do that right here together. Would you pray after me? Say, dear Jesus, Lord, I know what it's like to be stuck. Lord, I know what it's like to be in a storm. And I know what it's like to sin. Would you please forgive me? You see, I believe that you came and you died for my sins. And that three days later, you rose again. Would you come into my heart? Would you come into my life? I thank you that my past is past. And today, it's a new day with you in Jesus' name. Well, thank you. If you prayed that prayer for the first time ever, welcome to the family. We want to celebrate with you. You can private message any one of us or shoot us a little funky emoji that you made that decision. And uh, we'll be sure to follow up with you as well. Where do we go from here? Well, I'm not going to stay in the cornfield. <laughs> I got to get out of here. But at College Street, uh, our next steps, we like to use an acronym called CGI. And the first part is that we connect. And it's cool. I hope you felt the connection between me and, and uh, you today. But we want to connect on a deeper level. And you can be anywhere in the world right now. And we have connect groups that meet live online. You can go to our website and click on the link there. And we can't wait to actually meet you and see your face. And, and if you're one of the thousands that have been watching right here in the Fraser Valley, guess what? We are open. We have two services, one at 10.30 and 7 p.m. on Sunday, and connect groups that meet throughout the whole week, in person, gathering together. Our church continues to grow and reach the needs of its community, and we thank you for that. Which leads me into the next point, that we are called not just to go, but also to grow. And in growing, God gives us opportunities to seed and see a harvest. And His Word promises that He will bless the cheerful giver. I thank you for partnering with us so that we can reach as many people as we've been reaching, but God wants us to reach more. Your monies have met, have met the needs of the community and the needs all around the world. And so I'm gonna thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. And if you'd like to partner with us, there's many ways you can. They'll show up on the screen. You can click the links, you can text to give. Or there's many ways that we have to do that. But again, God isn't after your wallet. He's after your heart. We don't put pressure on giving, but we are so blessed to be generous and we know that God will bless you. So why don't we just pray for that right now? Father God, I just thank you for that family right now. I thank you for that business right now. I thank you, Lord, that your word promises that you will bless the cheerful giver, that you will do above and beyond all they can hope, imagine, or dream of. And Lord, would you take whatever seed they're using now, use it, multiply it for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. And the last but not least is invite. We know that part of being sent out and to send out is that we are to make disciples. It's not just about us. So if you were impacted by this teaching, this message today, will you share it with somebody, host a watch party, whatever, like it, comment, whatever you can do uh, to get the message of the good news out today. Otherwise, um, we'll see you next week or any other time for that matter. Take care and God bless. Well, welcome to the Cornfield. Welcome to Cornfield Victory Church. Hope you came for a nice light snack. <sighs> you ever see that video with Jul Julian Smith, Akbar? He falls in love with a cob of corn and then his grandma accidentally cooks him for dinner. <laughs> he drew his face on the corn and everything. <laughs> he named him Akbar and Akbar was just a corn.
But how many of us have gotten caught in situations that we thought were creative but actually turned out to be corny? <laughs> anyway. Ah! We have an online kids program just for your kids, multiple age, age, that. I'll, I'll restart that one because that was shaky as boots. <laughs> feel like a ghost lingering around here. <laughs> Do you lose all your money in the stocks? Well, good morning, guys. I was on my way to church this morning and it's not morning because it's day and I'm getting it all wrong. <laughs> It'll sound like a fart. No one will know. <laughs> oh man, I'm craving cornbread.